Hey, Dr. Rowe with the 123 A and P. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on plantar fasciitis. Alright, so let's go look down on the plantar surface of the foot. That's what I'm standing on right now, hovering over my anatomy table. My anatomage table. So if we zoom in, I want you to take note that that's the bottom of your foot. So numbered from right to left that's one two three four five your little pinky toe is number five you can see that there are these tendons that are going to attach you're going to go all the way down to the digits or phalanges of your foot big toe incidentally is called the hallux right. and you can see that these tendons are going to attach way down towards the underside of the, um, pump, the plantar surface of the foot and then they're going to converge. They're going to they fan out all the way down distally to the foot but then they're going to converge and form what's called the plantar aponeurosis. So right here, let's see if I can bring this down, turn it, we have a nice lateral view. So, if you look at the lateral foot and ankle, you see that this bone right here, that's called the calcaneus. So that's your heel bone, and the underside of the heel bone is the attachment point of the plantar fascia or the plantar aponeurosis, basically a ligament that attaches bone to bone. So if we turn it now to the plantar surface, you can see, I'm going to look at this one here. So the big toe is what we would call medial. It's medial, it's toward the midline of the body. Whereas lateral would be your, your pinky toe. So the plantar fascia, it's going to attach to all these little digits down here, and then it's going to converge to its, its um, origin, which is the underside of that calcaneus. And so it's actually a little bit medial on the calcaneus. So when you feel like you are, sorry for the movement here, when you feel like you're experiencing plantar fasciitis, it'll typically, it could present anywhere along this length, but the actual proximal attachment is a little bit medial on the, on the calcaneus, and so you'll feel it pulling from there. It hurts on the heel, but also a little bit on the inside of the foot. All right, let me add some muscles here. Hold on. Ooh. So note that there are layers upon layer of muscles also on the plantar surface of the foot. All right, and they're superficial and they're deep and there are a lot of fine motor control involved in walking, running, various activities so you know that they're going to be sore as well you're walking on them you're working them you're irritating them and then you imagine how many times you take steps throughout the day well, now you look at the back of the heel plantar fascia, see its attachment right there, and then you're on the calcaneus, and now just around the posterior of the calcaneus you've got the Achilles tendon, and that is right here. No. Hmm. They're calling it the gastrocnemia, so the muscle that gives the calf shape is in fact the gastrocnemius. But let me take the muscles off. Hmm. What are they calling it now? They removed it. Anyway, the Achilles tendon is right back there too. So it is all connected. All these muscles, tendons, and ligaments are all spliced together. 
and it's pretty incredible stuff. Long story short, if the bottom of your foot hurts, you may have plantar fasciitis. How do you fix it? Well, I'd start changing footwear. You know, I'd get some kick arounds, I'd get some work shoes, I'd consider some plug and play orthotics, what I call plug and play, which are cheapies, something that's going to provide you some arch support. Certain footwear, sneakers and stuff already have that integrated. You can get custom orthotics if you really need them, but they're very ridiculously expensive. Um, you can freeze a water bottle and put that on the sole of your bottom of your foot. Let it rest like that for a few minutes. Go through the stages of cold, burning, aching, and numbness. You can get a little rub-a-dub. I work on people's plantar fasciitis all the time. Make sure your gait patterns within normal limits. And it can be chronic. It can be a real freaking pain in the ass. People talk about heel spurs. Let me talk about let me address heel spurs for a moment. So if we look at the calcaneus here, there's some folks that have such tension on their plantar fascia that there will be, where the ligament attaches under here, there will be, look like a little splinter, jut like, a, like a, a nail coming out this way. And what happens is actually, it actually represents the calcification of that ligament, the plantar ligament, plantar aponeurosis, because of chronic pulling in that area. So it certainly can be associated with pain and dysfunction and chronic issues, but not necessarily always. At least it, it can look ugly as hell because it's calcified. Again, it looks like a big splinter or a nail that's attached on the bottom here. And uh, the tendency is to get scared out of your mind until you want to do something very invasive. I would, just my personal opinion, if you're somebody that I it was in my family member, I would discourage anybody from getting invasive procedures to treat a uh, plantar fasciitis because a lot of times it'll go away on its own if you just change your footwear. And finally, I would like to recommend a uh, type of footwear, a brand actually, that served me very well. It's called UFOS, double O-F-O-S, I tell a lot of people. They're like a higher quality croc in my opinion and they're very cushiony and supportive. And I would just kick around the house with those because it really feels like you're walking on pillows, you know, but supportive at the same time. They're my beach shoes. They're my around-the-house shoes. And then uh, change up your footwear frequently.